Welcome to the first episode of Baseball News Club. First thing I want to address is coronavirus. I want to first thank all the first responders, all the people that are in arm's way with this, the paramedics to the hospitals to even the grocery store workers. Uh, we thank you for being there for us while everyone is in quarantine and um, you know, hopefully this ends soon. Um, everyone around the world is probably really anxious about when this is going to end, but I know for baseball fans and people around the world, uh, you know, this has inconvenienced us. We missed spring training. We're miss missing baseball, a world baseball classic and hall of fame. But one thing that is amazing, awesome about baseball after every war, after every like nine 11 baseball, bring us back together. Baseball is America's sport and it's become the world sport. Uh, everyone around the world loves it. We'll be back on track, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, but it, everyone out there, you know, stay strong, uh, you know, support each other, and hopefully this will be over soon. You would think having the best record in baseball guarantees you a World Series. Not the case. Houston had 107 wins. Los Angeles Dodgers and National League had 106 wins. Both tops in their league. But who ended up winning the World Series? A wild card Washington National team with 93 wins. Sometimes it works your way, sometimes it don't. In standings, one of the things I like to look at is weakest divisions. And primarily, I didn't really get into super statistics with this. I just looked at teams with most losses. I didn't really get into hitting or pitching. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the American League Central Division. To me, that was the weakest division in the American League. When you look at Chicago, Kansas City, and Detroit, just not the teams they were 5, 10 years ago. For example, Chicago White Sox. As a Chicago White Sox fan, you're thinking to yourself, man, I miss Ozzy. Paul Canerico, man, like to have him back in the prime of his career. Not happening. Chicago struggle with 89 losses. And do me a favor, in the comments, if you think Paul Canerco is a Hall of Famer, please put your comments, put your discussion or argument. Chicago White Sox fans or baseball fans in general, please comment about that if you think Paul Canerco is a Hall of Famer. Moving on, the next team is Kansas City Royals, 103 losses, and then Detroit Tigers, 114 losses. Ouch. Um... I mean, a lot of Tiger fans are just going, man, we wish we had Jim Leland. Um, what's interesting about Detroit is they had $26 million in retained salary. It's very interesting where all that money is going. Um, Kansas City, before 2019, Kansas City, I'm sure they were thinking to themselves, Ned Yost is the honeymoon over. We're talking about the winningest coach in Kansas City history. They brought them a World Series in 2015. But after 2019, I think it just wasn't working out. The wins weren't happening. So they brought in Mike Matheny, which to me is a really positive sign. Uh, Mike Matheny worked for an amazing organization with St. Louis Cardinals, who are always competitive. And uh, he has four gold gloves, and he has a successful track record. So I think of those three teams, Kansas City is definitely the team that is looking on the up. Now we're going to move over to the weakest division in the National League. I selected National League West. Um, I know the Dodgers are a top team, but when you look at the division, San Diego Padres 92 losses, Colorado with 91 and then you have San Francisco with 85. Now, I'm going to come full circle on this. San Diego Padres had Bruce Bochy, left for San Francisco. The rest is history. Bud Black came in, took over a playoff contending team. My opinion, Bud Black can't take a team to the next level. I wasn't satisfied. In fact, I think he's the worst coach in Padres history. He moved on. Now, when you look at Colorado Rockies, I'm sure a lot of fans are wondering, you know, why can't we get Clint Hurdle back? They have Bud Black. I know some Rocky fans out there are going to argue, hey, Bud Black's our guy. Look at your playoff record. Win list in the playoffs. Again, he just, to me, my opinion, he doesn't have that capability of taking the team to the next level. Um, and then finally with San Francisco Giants. Obviously going through some rebuilding. Bruce Bochy's retiring. Full circle. Bruce Bochy, one of the great modern-day coaches. You're looking at a guy that had seven winning seasons. Four playoff appearances, three National League pennants, three World Series. To win one, not alone three, is very remarkable. Definite Hall of Famer, uh, 2,003 wins, fabulous. And now Gabe Kapler's taken over, but San Francisco always seems to know what pieces to put into place to make themselves competitive, so I'm curious how they're going to be in the future. Usually when you spend a lot of money with a ball club, you expect your team to be in first place, win a championship, be one of the best teams in the league. It's not always the case. Let's look at the average major league payroll for each team, or at least the average is $138 million. That is what average when you take all the teams, put it together. 
When you look at the American League, the payrolls for the division winners, New York Yankees, $223 million, Minnesota, $125 million, and Houston, $168 million. Got them to win the division. Then you look at the wild cards. Oakland Moneyball A's, $93 million. They have a ton of talent on that team. And then the big anomaly, which is just shaking the foundation of baseball, if you ask me, is the Tampa Bay Rays. 96 wins at $64 million. That was the lowest in the league. $64 million. Amazing. They have such a low injured reserve and retain uh, payroll. It's amazing. So for me, if I'm a team like Los Angeles Angels, Tampa Bay is the perfect case study. Angels, $161 million. 35 games out, 90 losses. And you just spent a bunch of money on an, another player in the offseason. Tampa Bay, phenomenal. Who knows, they might be the next. Houston, they got an amazing pitching staff, but really phenomenal payroll. All right, now we're going to move over to the National League and the payrolls over the National League. Now, keep in mind, again, the average in Major League Baseball is $138 million. When you look at the division winners, Atlanta, $144 million. St. Louis, $174 million. Los Angeles Dodgers, $207 million, which they are one of the best teams in baseball every year. Um, a lot of money spent. Then you look at the wild cards. Milwaukee, $135 million, And then the Washington Nationals, $172 million. And they're ranked 7th in Major League Baseball in payroll. Um, Watching end up winning the World Series. So a lot of money being spent. And if you don't spend a lot of money, you're usually not going to make it in for a division winner and and then you're most often not going to make it in the playoffs. But, again, when you look at Tampa Bay and the American League, really shakes that up. Okay, now we're going to move into the next topic, hitting. 2019 will go down undoubtedly is the HR season. More home runs were hit in Major League Baseball in 2019 than any time in the history of the game. 6,776 home runs were hit. And I still can't catch a home run ball. That is just an enormous amount of home runs. 15 teams, half the Major League Baseball, set new HR records. And when you look at the top four teams all time, those top four were set last year, 2019. Minnesota with 307, New York with 306, uh, Houston with 288, and Dodgers at 279. And if you didn't notice the correlation, those are all division winners. Or a wild card. It makes you wonder. Home runs. Homer ball. Pitching, we're going to look at how the correlation of having a great pitching staff correlates into not only a winning season, but playoffs. Uh, the average ERA for Major League Baseball is 4.49. Let's look at the ERA for the American League. When you look at the teams that were below the Major League average, they're all playoff teams. Division winners are wild card. Pitching is the name of the game in baseball, and you'd figure with all the home runs flying out of the ballpark, there's no way these ERAs are going to be getting into the playoffs. Pitching is still the name of the game. Okay, now let's go on over to the National League, and I'm not picking any league by preference, by the way. I'm just rolling along here. Uh, in the National League, when you look at the teams that were below 4.49 average ERA in Major League Baseball, um, those teams right there, Made it into the playoffs. Uh, I mean, LA 3.37. It's a ridiculous ERA, um, really low. And uh, teams that don't make that, obviously, you're not gonna you're not gonna be in the playoffs. Uh, you definitely in the National League, you have to have good pitching staff to get into the playoffs. But this is just an example. It shows you uh, correlation when you have a good ERA and underneath the, the rest of the league average, you're gonna make the playoffs. I know. I think in the last couple of years, there was a couple other teams that were anomalies, were above the league average and made playoffs. But again. Uh, you're not going to find a World Series teams or World Series winners with uh, ERAs above the league average. Not often. I can't think of any example off the top of my head. Finally, last item on the docket is fantasy. Fantasy teams in all sports, you name it, hockey, baseball, football, is millions of dollars are spent. Millions of dollars are involved in fantasy. Uh, when you look at the list here, what I put together, compiled, was last year's total base leaders um and usually you see the same guys every year i think freddie freeman's went up and down on that the year before 18 and, and moved up this year but 
Um, these are usually the guys that are going to be your main fantasy players because um, of their total bases. And, and it's fantasy, you know, luckily for us, we were able to get through spring training before coronavirus stopped Major League Baseball. So I think a lot of fantasy people out there were able to get together in their garages and their three by five cards and their whiteboards and do all their fantasy players and get everything put together. And um, from what I hear uh, today uh, is uh, April 7th, uh, Major League Baseball is still entertaining a way to have baseball played without fans. Um, we got to have our baseball. It would be nice to see it if we can pull that off. So fingers crossed. Hopefully we get some baseball here shortly and things turn around. All right. This is the end of our first episode. want to thank everybody. If you could please make comments below on what we posted today or just make comments about your favorite team. Uh, please subscribe, tell some friends, we're on Instagram, like the video, and um, hit the notica notification buttons, and we really appreciate it, and we'll see you real soon. Things going into me. Hmm. Doesn't sound right. Okay. You would think a lot of stuff like this and putting up more numbers. Uh, are you kidding me? Started.